at a time. So welcome, Shoban. She came all the way from Mass DPH up in good old Big Bad Boston. <laughs> My first time in Dartmouth. So. Oh, welcome. <laughs> all right. So she's going to talk to us about the Small Business Wellness Tax Credit, which I've talked to the group about before, but also about the Working on Wellness Program. So really excited to have her here. Very thankful. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so go ahead and take it away. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for the invitation uh, to come uh, here this morning. Um, so I work for the Division of Prevention and Wellness over at the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, specifically on worksite wellness. So I am here today to provide you with some information on the Small Business Wellness Tax Credit, as well as the Massachusetts Working on Wellness Program, which is a new initiative that was launched by DPH in August of this year to help businesses launch or implement a wellness program at their work site. Okay, I am going to provide um, a brief background and history on the Massachusetts Small Business Wellness Tax Credit. I'll provide um, an overview of the tax credit and go into some of the details. Um, to be eligible for the tax credit, your wellness program must be certified by the Department of Public Health. So I'll talk a little bit about the certification process and what that means. And then I'll provide some additional tools and resources available through the Department of Public Health for businesses who are either interested in in improving their worksite wellness program or launching uh, a new worksite wellness program if you don't already have one in place. So this incentive program came out of Chapter 224 of the Acts of 2012, and this was a piece of legislation that was signed by Governor uh, Deval Patrick uh, in 2012, and it's really aimed at improving the quality of health care and reducing costs through increased transparency, efficiency, and innovation. And it was really considered the next phase of Massachusetts health care reform, not only focusing on cost and quality, but also access to care. And I wanted to highlight some key provisions that came out of this legislation because they are directly related to worksite wellness and businesses. And one of them was an investment in prevention and wellness, specifically with the creation of the Prevention and Wellness Trust Fund. And this fund was created to reduce the cost of chronic diseases like asthma and heart disease, cancer. And the legislation allotted $57 million to this Prevention and Wellness Trust Fund. And we're really excited because 10% of it is for the adoption and expansion of worksite wellness programs. So we get $5.7 million to help businesses implement um, new initiatives for their employees. The other piece of legislation um, really uh, established the wellness tax credit. And this is really one of the first pieces of legislation to encourage businesses to implement worksite wellness programs. And it also required DPH to develop a model guide for wellness programs. And this is available through um, our website at mass.gov. And it guides businesses through um, a variety of different steps to help them implement um, a wellness program at their site. So some of the details of the wellness tax credit, the Small Business Wellness Tax Credit helps businesses, um, gives them a, ta a state tax credit, 25% of the cost of implementing a wellness program. Uh, and it's really meant to encourage adoption of evidence-based workplace wellness programming and evidence-based um, are programs and activities that we know are actually effective at improving employee health. Um, Businesses can apply for a tax credit of up to 25% of the cost of implementing a wellness program. So if a business spends, for example, $10,000 during the year for their wellness program, 25% of that would be $2,500. So they can apply for a $2,500 state tax credit. Um, they can apply for a maximum of $10,000 per business in a fiscal year. And the legislation has allotted $15 million um, per year for this tax credit. Um, the tax credit has been effect, in effect since 2013, and it will run through uh, December of 2017. So businesses, if they're implementing a wellness program every year, they can apply for the tax credit every year, and we definitely encourage that. <coughs> businesses can apply for a tax credit if they offer health benefits to their employees. They can be uh, sole proprietors, professions, trades, businesses, and partnerships. 501c3 organizations do qualify, but only for their unrelated business taxable income. To be eligible, your business must have 200 or fewer employees, and this is total number of employees. This is full-time, part-time, seasonal, contractors, anyone who you consider an employer, an employee within your company. And the majority must work in Massachusetts. So they don't have to live in Massachusetts, but they have to work here um, in the state. Um, and businesses must also be in compliance with all federal and state labor laws. 
So a lot of people ask us, well, what do we mean by a wellness program? Um, and so this is kind of what we look at when we look at, does your program qualify um, for the tax credit and to be certified by DPH? And a wellness program to us is a place, it provides a safe workplace that protects and promotes health. It's designed to improve the health of individual employees, and it consists of eight essential components, which I will review uh, in the next slide. So, as I mentioned, to receive the tax credit, you must be certified by the Department of Public Health. And that means that you must meet the eligibility criteria, so less than 200 employees, offer health benefits, no federal or state labor laws, and your wellness program must have these particular components. So you have to have an annual budget for wellness, so there has to be some type of funding allocated towards your wellness programs. That could be for staff salary, maybe you're subsidizing gym memberships, posters, anything that you're using for your wellness program. You must designate a wellness champion, and this is a person at your company that leads your wellness efforts, um, and, there, and it must be included in the job description. So in the job description, it must say this is the wellness champion for our particular program, and these are his and her, her uh, duties <coughs> in this programming. In addition to that, your wellness program must have a formal communication plan. So you, know, you want your employees to know about the wellness program, you want them to participate. So you want to be able to communicate what you're doing at your work site. So this can be in the form of emails, it could be at staff meetings, it could be with flyers, newsletters, but there has to be a formal communication plan. And then you also, we require that your uh, wellness program also assess the health status of your employees. And this is, these are two examples, the health risk assessment and biometric screenings. Um, and the health risk assessment are basically um, survey tools that assess the health status and behavior of employees. And this could be done through your um, insurance company or third party. And biometric screenings are measurements like cholesterol and high blood pressure, um, BMI, things like that. And the reason we ask um, companies to assess the health status is because you want to be able to design a worksite um, action plan or program that really fits the key priorities or key um, issues and employees in your organization. <coughs> We also require that you collect data on employee uh, interests. So we want to know, uh, or you want to know as, your, as the employer, what your employees are interested in. Are they interested in stress management classes? Are they interested in nutrition programs, in physical activity, in yoga? And then we ask that you identify the key health issues or interests of your employees. So you take all the data of the health risk assessment, biometric screenings, employee interests, and you kind of look at what are the top issues among employees at your organization. And then you design the programs based on uh, key health issues. And we do have a requirement that um, one component is an awareness education program, one component a behavioral change program, and one component an environmental um, support program. Which I have examples of all and can help you with all, so don't get overwhelmed with that. Yeah. <laughs> and I have some examples yeah. of too. And they have sound some... fancy, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a lot of resources on our website as well that provides tons of examples of what um, would fit under these three categories. And then the last criteria is that a minimum of 33% of your employees must participate in at least one element of your worksite wellness program. So again, these are the three components that your wellness program must have, an awareness education, encourage, um, encouraging individual behavior change, and a supportive environment. And these are just some examples of what we mean by awareness and education. So these are programs that are um, going to educate your employees on a specific <coughs> health topic. They could be things like um, education classes on diabetes prevention, um, brochures, videos, information sessions, and health insurance benefits. Some examples of behavioral change programs, and these are, uh, are programs where employees can reflect on their behaviors, and, are, and these programs are really going to encourage them um, to take action on uh, whatever behavior you know, you're looking to improve. So they could be tobacco cessation programs, lifestyle coaching, incentives for participation uh, for your subsidized health screenings at your workplace. And supportive environments are really uh, policies or uh, guidelines at your work site that are going to create a healthy environment for your employees. And this could be, for example, you know, if you have a cafeteria or vending machines, things like that, you want to make sure to um, provide healthy options for your uh, employees. Now, I don't know if we have internet access here, I was going to show the application, but it is available on our website at mass.gov slash wellness tax credit. And it's a very simple um, application. Um, 
it takes maybe like 10 minutes to complete, but it asks you basic questions about, you know, who's filling this application out, um, your address. It asks you, do you have a wellness champion? Yes or no. It asks you, what awareness and education um, programs have you implemented? And it gives you a list, um, and you can put other and write other on there. Um, and at the end of the application, you certify that the information is correct. So a lot of businesses will ask us, well, you know, do you require for us to submit a budget or do you require for us to submit the job description of the wellness champion? The answer is no, but legally, by checking the box and saying that you certify that this information is correct, you know, we, we trust you. So. <laughs> um, and the way that it works, you complete the application. If you do not meet the eligibility criteria, you'll automatically receive a message from DPH saying that you're not eligible for the tax credits. If you do meet the eligibility criteria, your application will go into pending status. We'll review your application for a programmatic um, review. So, you know, do you have an awareness education component, environmental component, wellness champion budget? So we check all of that. And then if it passes programmatic review, we send it to um, review for labor law um, violations. So we do check to make sure that there are no federal state labor law violations. Um, if your application is approved, you will receive an email from DPH um, with a certificate, and that's how you, you know your, your program is certified. And you also receive um, a tax credit number. You print out the certificate, and then you submit it when you submit your annual tax returns, and that's how you receive um, the tax credit. If you are denied, you will receive a courtesy email, and you will receive the denial letter via certified mail, and you have 15 days to appeal um, the letter. So we do um, have an appeal process. And I just wanted to give everyone a brief snapshot of who's applied in the past um, two years. We, I don't have 2015 data yet because applications are due December 31st. Um, but in 2013, we had 34 businesses that were uh, approved, and we approved a total credit of $243,000. Um, in 2014, we had 27 businesses and approved $206,000. So we have $15 million per year. So we're really trying to encourage mm -hmm. businesses, small businesses, to apply um, for this tax credit. So I definitely encourage all of you, if you have a wellness program or if you know of businesses, who have uh, wellness programs to um, guide them to mm -hmm. or direct them to our website so that they can apply for the uh, small business tax credit. This is our email address, dphwellness.taxcreditestate.mass.us, and um, you can send any questions about the tax credit there and we'll respond within three business days. And you can also visit our website for eligibility criteria, the link to the application, and resources like the model wellness guide. Now before we conclude, um, I want to talk about a few resources that we have at DPH available to um, businesses um, who are interested in implementing a worksite wellness program. And one of them, as I mentioned, is the Model Wellness Guide. And it includes examples of evidence-based interventions. It talks about the importance of healthy lifestyles and has a step-by-step -step process of what businesses can do to implement programs. So everything from buy-in to how do you implement a program to how do you evaluate a program. Um, now this resource hasn't been updated since 2013, so the next resource, if you're looking for examples of evidence-based interventions, this is the resource that I would use. Um, it was uh, produced in collaboration with the Worksite Wellness Council in Massachusetts. It's updated annually, and it was just updated in September, so it, it has some really, really great um, updated resources. It's free and it's available at the Worksite Wellness Council of Massachusetts website and also will be available on the Mass.gov website. But this has examples for every disease topic. It's examples on how um, to implement the programs, evaluation resources, planning resources. Everything is um, available on their website. This is the Working on Wellness Toolkit. It provides um, evidence-based steps for developing a wellness program, also available on the website. There's also a smoke-free toolkit in case your businesses are interested in um, tobacco-free environmental policies. And then the last program I wanted to talk about is Massachusetts Working on Wellness. Has anybody heard about this program? Yeah, they just got, okay. yeah, oh. they just got uh, awarded the grant from the town of oh, Fairhaven. Yeah. And then everybody here and then on my e-blast e um, has heard of it. Um, 
because I've, I've sent it out as far as information. You have two more cohorts next year starting. We do. We do have two more cohorts. Great. So this is, um, for those of you who are not aware of the Massachusetts Working on Wellness Program, this is a new training and capacity building program for um, employer, employers in Massachusetts, and it's mm -hmm. being funded by the Prevention and Wellness Trust Fund. Health Resources in Action and Advancing Wellness are managing the program, and UMass Lowell and UMass Medical Center are going to be evaluating um, the program. But it's a recent program. It launched in August of 2015, and we are recruiting 350 uh, businesses for this particular program. So it's a lot of businesses throughout the entire state of Massachusetts. Um, and these are businesses that currently do not have a wellness program or have a wellness program, but it's not what we consider comprehensive, which means it doesn't have all of those components that I talked about. It doesn't have a wellness champion. It doesn't assess the health needs of, the, of, uh, of their employers, uh, of the employees. It doesn't have an evaluation plan, things like that. Um, and the goal is really to help businesses adopt evidence-based practices that are going to support a healthy worksite environment and also help improve um, the health of employees. And the program has a number of elements. We are providing training, so we have an online management system where um, once accepted into the program, employers can go on and take self-paced um, training modules. Each employer accepted into the program is assigned a technical assistant, um, and so they'll have technical assistance calls once or twice um, a month. It will be available to answer um, any questions from the uh, employers. We have support resources like case studies, newsletters, articles, um, evidence-based practices. Um, we have community linkages, so we're really excited about this piece because we want to be able to connect businesses to community resources to help support the health of their employees. Um, monitoring evaluation, we will provide employers with all the tools for evaluation. So we'll provide them with the health needs assessment, we'll provide them with the, uh, sorry, the health risk assessment, environmental scan, um, all the data collection tools, we'll train them on how to do um, how to collect the information, and then our teams at UMass Medical Center and UMass Global will summarize all that information, feed it back to their employers so that they can go ahead and uh, develop a worksite action plan um, for their employees. Uh, we also provide seed funding in the amount of $5,000 to $10,000, and the amount really depends on the size of the business and the types of programs that they're planning on implementing. We do ask, um, or part of the requirements, is that businesses do match the seed funding. If you're a for-profit business, your a business must match 100% of the seed funding, but 50% of that can be in-kind. If you're a nonprofit organization, you have to match 50%. Um, but 100% of that can be in kind. Um, and then we all, we'll also have a participation in best practices, uh, best practices forum where employers can share best practices, lessons learned, challenges, uh, things of that sort. So who can apply um, in Massachusetts for profit, nonprofit, or government entity? There are, unlike the small business bonus tax credit, it's not just any at small businesses, any employer can apply. Um, you must offer health insurance benefits to your employees, have no state or federal labor law violations. You could not have a current uh, wellness program or like I mentioned, a comprehensive wellness program. And you must not have applied and successfully received a seal of approval from DPH for the tax credit. And this is because if you have received um, a tax credit, then that means your program is pretty robust um, and you may not benefit from the Massachusetts Working on Wellness Program. And so if you would like more information on this program, you can visit www.masswow.org. Um, it is required that prior to applying, you attend an informational webinar, and this is because we want to make sure businesses um, understand um, you know, what the work on wellness program entails, the eligibility criteria, and what would, be at, what would we be asking of you as part of the program. And applications were due September 20th. Um, but we are recruiting for cohort two beginning in February of 2016 with an enrollment date, I believe, of April, and for cohort three in August, September of 2016. So the other two cohorts will be um, next year. What are the deadlines for you? So we don't have specific deadlines yet. Recruitment will begin in February, and so if you visit our website or email, um, me at DPH, I would be happy to give you more information on that. But we'll have a list of webinars you can sign up. Um, and then an application that's also available online. So we can we can sign up and view the webinar prior to February, or we wait till February recruitment. 
So I would wait until like January, February because we don't have any webinars set yet. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. <laughs> I, I don't know if I missed that you said this, but do you have a minimum number of employees for the, um, the small business wellness tax credit? Do you have a yes. minimum number? So for the small business wellness tax credit, the, you, as an employer, it has to be 200 or fewer employees. But a minimum? No, there's no minimum. No minimum. It could be okay. one to 200. Okay, thank you. But there's no minimum or there's no requirement for the Working on Wellness program. That's correct. We have um, priority populations. So yeah. we do, you know, we're actively recruiting like smaller businesses and businesses that are located in PWTF, Provincial Wellness Trust Fund, Mass in Motion Communities, and employers that employ low wage workers. Mm -hmm. But any business can apply um, and we're recruiting yeah. 300 employees. Yeah. Businesses. And I just want to clarify a lot of you go and exceed the 200 employees, right? Mm -hmm. But you're at the maybe the 300 mark or, or 250 mark for employees. But you're also in mass in motion communities because New Bedford and Fall River are mass in motion communities. So just keep that in mind. And that makes me think of uh, companies like Tago, which has both a Rhode Island component and a Massachusetts component. They're one corporation, but I, I, I have no idea how many people work there. But I, what if the Massachusetts site employs fewer than 200, even if the whole company employs yeah, more? Yeah, you for, can't apply. For the okay. tax credit, for the working on wellness program, you could apply. Working for the small yes. business wellness tax credit has to be 200 or fewer employees. To the whole total. It could be okay. in the United States plus international. Got it. Like in total, it has to okay. be 200 Thank you. less. The differentiation, I'm sorry, between sure. the two is one is for getting going, getting initiating a wellness program, that's where you would go with this um, wow.org. Mm -hmm. And then once once you get, um, if you're already, oh, okay, and any number of employees for that. Right, right? so the okay. small business wellness tax credit is right. for small businesses that already have a wellness program in place okay. and want to receive a state tax mm -hmm. credit. The Massachusetts Working on Wellness program is for to help businesses who want to launch a wellness mm -hmm. program at their site to guide them through the entire steps of how to go about doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So we will you know, meet with them on a monthly basis and we have a training and a plan in place to help them move from not having a wellness program to having a full functioning right. wellness program. Okay, so I have a question. So this goes away at the end of 2017 and yet you haven't spent the money that you'd really like to be spending on this. Is the money cumulative and like? It's, it's not. Accumulative. It's not, okay. So you really are hoping that folks are going to start doing some big time Correct. recruiting. And what will happen after 2017? Do you have any idea? So the tax credit, because this is the legislation, it's the law, it's only available to 2017 um, unless there's a new law that says we'll continue the tax credit. The tax credit will end in 2017. <coughs> so is there any reason before we get to apply for the grant money to not start you know, getting committee members together or starting a committee to talk about these things or to even maybe do an initial surveys or any reason not to have those in place just no, you that's not the full program so we could do a few of those things and still qualify right you could but the really great thing about I mean you can start the committee and start talking about it but the really great thing about waiting is because as part of the program we need you to implement um, a couple of data collection tools like for example um, the needs and interest survey it's a standard tool that all the employers are going to um, okay so we wouldn't have to create that you would right we would okay. provide all of that we wouldn't have to create any of the materials we could provide it all for you and we would um, take all that information and summarize it for you in charts and everything so that you have that available to discuss with your wellness committee and then we even help you with your um, action plan as well so all of that is part of the program and there's no charge for all that no wow well, that's it's, really you nice the funding, we just ask for the business that's matched the seed funding but right. all the funding is for your site we're not asking for um, and, and all those tools and stuff that you all those tools are for the Give us some ideas of how people, uh, the matching funding, in, um, in kind uh, services, mm -hmm. types of things mm -hmm. that have been qualified for that. Sure. So in kind can be like stop time. So let's say um, you know uh, you would designate an employee as a wellness champion, and 10% of that employee's time will be used 
used for uh, the wellness program, you can use that as in kind. If you're using um, materials from your facility, for example, to um, print out posters or flyers, that could be considered in kind. It's anything that um, is not money related. Okay. So any, anything, a lot of things can qualify as in kind. Okay, so say for example, example in our town, Linda is designated as the wellness champion now. She has officially been <laughs> no pressure. No. Yeah. <laughs> and she's going to get a lot of support, though. But um, we heard, so we would use her rate for her job that she's doing. Yeah, for the we we are developing. So this is um, a new program. So we just developed some guidelines around the budgeting. So we are there's like a certain percentage that you could um, there's like a minimum or a maximum percentage that you can use the money or the income for staff salary, but oh, a portion okay. of that could be staff salary. So oh. we have. Um, guidelines available and we just developed those okay. as well. That's a good question. So which segues me to the other question is what would be a business's requirement as far as an employee devoting, say, their time to this upon their regular forty hour a week job. So what are we looking at like per week for a for for a wellness champion? So we say that they should be dedicating about um, eight to ten hours. I believe it's either a week I think it was a week, yeah, eight yeah. to ten. It could be less. I mean, yeah. you know, it depends, I think, on the modules and the training. So it's a, it is a little time intensive. Right. So the wellness champion that you do end up picking needs to know that um, in order to do the training modules and whatnot. Right. So there's the training modules, and then they'll be organizing. The, there has to be like a wellness committee involved. They probably be facilitating the wellness committee, okay. <clears throat> helping to develop um, an action plan. And those modules are self-paced? They are self-paced. And it can be done at any time? It can be done at any time online. Do you see that, that as an initial investment of time, eight to 10 hours a week for you know, like a couple months, or, or is that something you project for a year or more at least the whole? It'll probably be more intensive at the beginning and less time as you um, move on. Um, so again, this is a new program, so um, we'll have to see how it plays out, but we do see it just being a bit more work at the beginning, but a little less work um, later on during the program. Are there, do you know if there are any incentives or any programs for um, kind of a combination of employees and community members anywhere, or? So what do you mean? We have um, a couple of ideas. Someone had come to um, come to us and was talking about doing an employee-based kind of like a Fitbit challenge kind of thing. But I was trying to see if there was a way that I could tie it into a community, open it up to the community as well, so not just limit it to the employees. But <coughs> of course, funding is always the issue and staffing. <laughs> but um, we, I did reach out to Fitbit, and they have employee programs, of course but they're extremely expensive. So I was trying to figure out if there was something kind of in between, you know, because we don't qualify for the, the tax credit. Right. Um, and then something, this would solely be, um, you know, work site, so. I do not know of any programs, but you could visit the work site, the work, uh, work site Wellness Council of Massachusetts website, okay. because they do have um, additional resources on there, and they may be like a better um, place to find information around that. Would you be able to give us a list, um, and maybe it's just something I email you, for what companies have um, been accepted into the cohort program? Mm -hmm. Just, I'm looking for a similar company, that's all. A like similar company? Similar to what our company is. So let that me might ask, be I don't, already. yeah, I don't know what the guidelines are around uh, providing that information, okay. but if you send me an email, um, I would be happy to reply. How many did they recruit for this? So cohort? for this cohort, we accepted because some people, some companies did not meet the eligibility criteria. Thirty. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Fairhaven is the only one from the South Coast that you know of. I think so. You might be, you might be the only one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to ask Mari. She probably knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mari does know. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have the list. <laughs> okay. I will see if we can share that list. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a great diverse um, uh, population down here as far as work sites, restaurants, mm -hmm. 
blue collar jobs, you know, a lot of diversity. So um, we really want to take advantage of what the um, state has to offer. So Absolutely. this is helpful. Yeah, I mean, it's a really great program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, of the applicants who we accepted, over 50% were small businesses, which is really great mm -hmm. to know. Question on the tax credit. Did you say there was an average tax credit or maximum amount? $10,000. For, for the year? For the year. That's a lot. Wow. So I just started my first on site diabetes prevention okay. program right here in Dartmouth on Ventura Drive. And they still have anybody that they're opening up to just employees. If there's any others that want to join in outside of their employee base, we have four more seats. So if anybody knows anybody wants to jump into the program locally, we're holding it right here on Ventura Drive. but. Their company, he's paying like right out. He's paying for every employee for the DBP for the whole program. Oh, wow. But this tax and credit would be awesome for him to do um, to at least get uh, some uh, funds back for his Absolutely. investment. Is it less than two hundred employees? It's oh, right. Oh. That's the problem. He said he has <laughs> yeah. two hundred and fifty. Yeah. yeah, but maybe uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. That's what it says in print. Print. Who knows? Maybe they're less than that less now. Than that. I don't know. We'll It'll check on which pass. Which yeah. website is it? It's um, better for community living. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, so that's, that's well. Great. The other option would be the organ wellness, but right. I understand the seed funding. Um, the the uh, in the MOU, it's specific to certain certain things that you need to spend it on. Is that correct? So we are there, I mean it has to be, we are developing guidelines, they're in draft form, but we provide some guidance around the seed funding. Okay. Um, it has to be for the wellness program, yeah. so I mean, like staff yeah. could be a percentage of it, it could be for getting someone in to do nutrition classes or incentives or whatever it is. So we do provide some guidelines, but it's not like very, very strict or narrow okay. where we say this is, you know, these are the only five things that you can see funding on now. So incentives would be one of the things, like if you, if you would say, say participate in the program, you can have you know, what they do, a Fitbit or something like that. Those are all. Absolutely. Okay. And for the tax credit, that would count, of course, if the tax credit too. So if you're doing like incentives and things like that, that would count towards the $10,000. Mm -hmm. Great. Now's your time, guys. Questions. Mm. <laughs> Family Service Association, which sits on this collaborative, they were one of the recipients for that, and they, Sue Potvin, um, really spoke very highly of the program. It got her up and running, and she has a very um, organized, um, comprehensive worksite wellness program. Mm -hmm. So we like to look at her worksite as a, as a um, for example of that. Um, and then obviously the Prevention Wellness Trust Fund came down the pike, and now we have a very generous amount of money through MassDPH. I know Maine and there's another state that does work site wellness too and they're not as generous as Massachusetts. I've done my research so it is nice. You kind of have to work for it but at the same time it gives back to your work site so um, keeping that in mind. Yeah, another question. I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> So we, we talked about the eight to ten hours a week or a month. Not sure yet, but uh, that one is going to have to be voted. She's she's good with that. Um, her, her boss has uh, graciously given her some time to do this too. But beyond that, when we start recruiting people to help, um, you know, to be, you know, participating from different facilities or different unions or whatever, do you have a sense for? what we should be telling them their commitment needs to be over time. Yeah, so we actually have, so once Linda, is that, that mm -hmm. Yeah, so you started the program already, yes. correct? Yes. You've probably done some of the selfies modules and yes. into a TA call. Um, so we will guide you through that. So in the module where we talk about buy-in, we'll talk about what your wellness committee would look like, who you might want to invite to the wellness committee. We'll provide you with email templates so you don't even have to design your own email. You could personalize it and say, this is what the wellness committee is. This is what we're going to be doing in the next year. We invite you to take part in the wellness committee. It'll say maybe two to three hours um, a month. And the role of the wellness committee will be to assist Linda um, in leading some of these efforts um, and strategizing and developing, kind of identifying what the key issues or topics are for uh, the employees based on the data that we provide. Mm -hmm. So we'll provide all of those tools for Linda. And I think this may be my last question. <laughs> <laughs> Last year we tried to 
do something that, like this on our own. And of course, in, in a municipality, it's very difficult to get funding for <coughs> you know, things like this. And, um, you know, we, we can justify based on this is going to be a return on investments and employees and all that, but still, if you go to town meeting and try to request money <laughs> that, and the thought that it might be used for incentives for the employees, that was really not going to go well. But we did work with our um, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield as our insurance provider, and they, they were helpful to us, and they have a website you can go on to learn, you know, about wellness and uh, health, uh, and, and uh, that's helpful too. So they have uh, they were going to offer us, say, Fitbits at a discount or, you know, group discount and so on. So it, is there, and would there be an issue with kind of working that those two things together? So we could buy the Fitbits through them if there was a volume discount they offered Absolutely. and then charge it to the grant and so on. That, that yeah. would, okay. Yeah. I know it's definitely a challenge to implement worksite wellness program and the return on investment. We get a lot of questions about that. And the really great thing about working on wellness is that we have these amazing evaluators who are going to be monitoring and evaluating the program for all 350 employers. And so what we hope to see is that employees are improving their health. Um, and so by the end of the program, after we recruit the 350 businesses, we will do an evaluation of the entire program. Um, so that will be available um, once we have that data. I mean, it was encouraging that we had you know, people come out, we had a step challenge, and people participated even without, I mean, it was very little uh, incentive that was there, just donations that were made, um, you know, $300, that was the total, you know, available to all employees. And people came out and participated, so <coughs> this was really helpful. Yeah. One more question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Once we get through with the working on wellness and have our program all together, we don't really pay taxes, so how how could we sustain our program? Is there any incentive for municipalities? That's a really, really great question. And one of the things that we're, we're, we're working on is trying to develop a sustainability plan to, to help businesses maintain the program after um, it's done. And we will have resources and other things that we've developed um, to help businesses do that. So we'll have more that. But we are definitely thinking about how to help businesses sustain um, their programming. And the Prevention and Wellness Trust Fund um, has an advisory board and we have a committee and these are one of the things that we look at how to sustain these programs after funding is complete. Okay. So great information, really valuable um, to bring back to your work sites but also to share with your colleagues. Uh, so a lot, because a lot of work sites couldn't be here today. So. We thank you for your time. And if anybody has questions further, they can email you or call you, right? Absolutely. Feel free to email me, call me, and I will send you the PowerPoint. Yeah, and I'll share it with the group. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good.